Behind me are the hills on the north bank of the River Boyne. William's army of 36,000 men would have been encamped behind these hills. On the morning of the 1st of July, William would have deployed some of his 36 cannon on this hillside. William had 36 cannon, James had only 12, and James had actually sent some of his cannon away. But these cannon would have been uh, fixed on the Jacobite positions on the other side of the, the river, and it would have opened up on them at 8 o'clock in the morning with a view to softening them up. We're looking downstream from where the Huguenot, the Enniskillen men, the Derry men, and the Dutch Blue Guard crossed the river. We're now looking at the area where the Danes crossed the river. At the head of his cavalry, William crossed the Boyne. Most people have this image of William crossing the river on a white horse, sword advanced and with great style and aplomb uh, pointing towards the enemy. The truth is somewhat different. The horse was almost certainly not white, but future artists have uh, depicted the horse white as a tribute to the House of Hanover, whose symbol the white horse was. On Monday the 30th of June, the day before the Battle of the Boyne, William reconnoitred the, the riverbank to see the enemy dispositions. Some Jacobite troops on the other side of the river spotted William with his entourage. They brought up a cannon, pointed it in the general direction of William and fired. The cannonball ricocheted but grazed William on the shoulder. In fact William fell and the Jacobites on the other side of the river saw him fall and a cheer went up. And the story went around the Jacobite army that William had been killed. Reports of William's death also circulated around the Williamite camp, so much so that William made a point of doing a tour around his entire army to demonstrate to them that he was very much alive. Behind me are the ruins of Mellifont Abbey, a Cistercian foundation. Here William and his senior military commanders held a council of war on the evening of the 30th of June. There was a disagreement about what the tactics and the battle plan for the following day were. Count Solmes, the commander of William's infantry and the commander of the Dutch Blue Guard, favoured a full frontal assault here in the Old Bridge sector across the river. Instead of the attack at uh, Old Bridge being a diversion, William favoured the attack at Old Bridge being the main fault. With the attack upstream at Rosnery or Slane, as a diversion. At five o'clock on the morning of the 1st of July, William dispatched Meinhard Schomburg, the son of Marshal Schomburg, and Lieutenant General Douglas, with approximately a third of his army upstream. This was to be the diversion. They crossed the river and encountered Sir Neil O'Neill and his regiment of dragoons. The dragoons fought very, very bravely. But once Sir Neil O'Neill was mortally wounded, as it turned out, the fight went out of his men. They felt they had discharged their duty to their commander, and with that uh, they largely gave up, and the Williamites were able to cross the river with consummate ease. We're in Denour Graveyard, James's headquarters, looking directly across at King William's Glen. It was here on the morning of the 1st of July that James would have seen Maynard Schomburg and Lieutenant General Douglas leading some 12,000 men from William's army upstream. James formed the erroneous impression that the whole Williamite army was moving upstream, would cross the river and attack him in the rear. So believing that to be the case, James sent two-thirds of his best troops upstream to encounter them. We're standing in the field in which the Battle of the Boyne was largely fought, at least the most severe and serious fighting. And behind me is the Coddington House. This here would have been the scene of some of the most severe and heavy fighting of the day. There were Jacobites in the village 
and they put up an initial resistance. The Jacobite troops on the hillside and in the dead ground before the hill also offered a serious threat to the Williamite troops as they crossed what effectively had become a killing field. Eventually, they drove the Jacobites off this hill and into headlong retreat towards the village of Delik and the bridge across the River Nanny, which was their only possible means of retreat. The Nanny blocked any potential Jacobite retreat, with the exception of this bridge over here. The older bridge is the one more distant from us. The Jacobites retreated from Dunor to this point, but so too did the Jacobite forces at Rosnery. At Rosnery, the Jacobites became conscious that Meinhard Schomburg was looking for a way off uh, encircling them. And conscious of that fact, they headed for the bridge at Delik. For James, the Battle of the Boyne represented the end of his dream that Ireland would prove the stepping stone to regaining his three lost kingdoms. For William, the outcome was somewhat different. For William, he gained control of Ireland east of the Shannon. However, he had not brought Ireland completely under control. That would await the Battle of Ockram the following year, when, in a much bloodier battle, the Jacobites were comprehensively defeated. <laughs>